Subject today, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The I am statements, if you would, of Jesus Christ that are recorded, the seven I am statements that are recorded in the book of John are, are given to us as the ideals of the original statement that God made to Moses when he declared that I am that I am. The book of John helps to unpack that. It helps to flesh out the reality that God says I am that I am, meaning that I have always been who I will always be. Demonstrating to us that he helps us to know that our needs can never go beyond who he is. Let me say that one more time. Our needs can never go beyond who he is because we recognize it's because of who he is right. that we be. If he weren't who he was, we would not have the existence that we have. As a matter of fact, the Bible says it is him we live, we move, and we have our being. And so when you think about it, even in the creation, the Bible says, and God said, let there be. And so the only way that there could have been a be is because that God already is. Not that he was, he always is. And so we recognize through John, he helps us to flesh out. He helps us to unpack the I am that God gives us in the book of Exodus to Moses. I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection. I am the true vine. He unpacks, he fleshes out all of the I am that you and I need him to be. Have you ever thought about it that God has never, ever allowed you a problem that he couldn't fix? The reason being is because he is, and because he is, he can be whatever you need him to be no matter what your problem may be. Because he was always is before you be. I, I know that's a bad word. I know that's bad language, and I know somebody's going to give me an F for my grammar right now, but it's just the reality about God. He always is before we be. And so as John is laying it out for us even today, he helped us on last week to understand. He says that he was the door. He was the door of the sheep. He was the way into the sheepfold. He was the way into God, understanding that I just come service, we said that the only way to God is through his son, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And you cannot have a relationship yeah. with God outside of the person right. of Jesus Christ. You've got to have yeah. Jesus because yeah. you just can't make it by yourself. And so as John begins to unveil and he begins to unpack and he begins to reveal to us in the word of God, the reality of Jesus Christ, he makes this pronouncement, another part of the I am statement, I am the good shepherd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And notice what he says, I am, that is a full sentence, a full statement, I am the good shepherd. When, when he says I am the good shepherd, first of all, here's what he's saying. As the good shepherd, I supply for my sheep. The, uh, the motif of that day or the agriculture of that day, the demographics of that day and time that they lived in, sheep were a staple of that mid-eastern culture. Yeah, sheep were, ev were, were everywhere you turn. No matter where you go, more than likely you would see or you would hear a sheep or you would hear lamb you would hear sheep and you would hear lamb because they were a staple of that day much like in our culture you know it's kind of say it's difficult to go throughout the day with seeing a dog right. in that culture it would have been difficult to go out throughout the day and not see sheep or see a lamb and so when Jesus presents himself as the good shepherd it is something that resonates with the people of that time. It makes sense for him to say that he is the good shepherd. Why? Because people are familiar with shepherd and sheep. And so when he says that I am the good shepherd, automatically they start thinking about what does a shepherd do? 
What is the purpose of a shepherd? And one of the purposes of a shepherd, a purpose, a purpose of a shepherd would say, I live to lead. All right. Again, we're talking about that I supply for my sheep. So one of the main things that I do is I live to lead. All right. As you would recall in John chapter 10, even at verse number 9, he says the same thing. I am the door. Anyone who enters by me, he will be saved. And I will go in and out what, and find pasture. Yeah. Meaning that he lived to be able to lead the sheep where they needed to go. Watch this. He didn't lead them where they wanted to go. He needed them. He leaded them where they needed to go. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He is the one that leads and he lives to lead. And so when we think about it, the fact that he is the good shepherd, he is always leading you and I where he wants us to go. And isn't it amazing that sometimes he does lead us through the path of death, yeah, yeah. the path of the shadow of death, because ultimately being the shepherd, he knows where you and I need Amen. to go. Yeah. Sometimes he leads us on the path of trouble. Right. Sometimes he leads us on the path of tribulation. Sometimes he leads us on the path of trial, but he knows where we need to go. Why? Because he lives to lead us. Yeah. And I'm convinced that if he is my shepherd and I shall not want, I got to let him lead me where he wants me to go. Yeah. So not only does he live to lead, but he labors in love. All right. That's what a shepherd does. He labors in love. And how does he labor in love? There are two things that he does. First of all, he provides protection. And, and it would just say it this way. He gives protection and yeah. he gives provision. He gives protection and he gives yeah, provision. Yeah. And it is a labor of love. All right. All right. Notice again, we look at verse number 11. He says the good shepherd does what? He gives his life for the sheep. It is a labor of love. Watch now, watch right. now. There are two things that he does. One of the things that a, that a shepherd had the responsibility of, had a conversation with Sean, Sean Aguilar a few days ago, and something that he studied brought to my attention, I thought it was quite amazing, is that one reason that especially domesticated sheep, as we know, need a shepherd is because they are inflicted sometimes with parasites. And those parasites want to get into their ear, ultimately getting inside their head. And if it gets in their head, it makes them crazy. So what does a shepherd do? A shepherd uses his oil and he anoints that sheep's head with oil. That way it becomes a deterrent to the parasites that want to get in his head and make him crazy. Aren't you glad that you have a shepherd that loves you with all of the mess that you hear going around you, with all of the problems that you hear around you, the TMI, too much information, too much death, too much stabbing, too much disease, too much raping, with all that you hear. Thank God that you've been anointed with the oil of the Lord that even when you hear it, it doesn't make you crazy. It doesn't make you go out of your mind. Why? Because he is there for your protection. Yeah. He protects us. He, he protects us. And so the, the shepherd was there as a protection against all that would come against the sheep because sheep for the most part are helpless creatures. All right. Another thing that, that, again, Sean and I were talking about, and I thought it was quite amazing. He says, anybody that believes in evolution, uh -huh. all they got to do is look at a sheep. Uh -huh. He said, when you think about it, ever since God made sheep, they never changed. Yeah. Because evolution says that everything actually gets better as it evolves. Uh -huh. But when you think about domesticated sheep, they always helpless. They, they don't have sense of direction. Right. Somebody always has to help them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And of all the things God could have called us. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He calls us yeah. sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Helpless. Yeah. They, they have no defense mechanism. In other words, sheep don't have claws that they can fight with. Yeah. 
they got they got little bitty teeth, but they can't really help them to bite nothing other than what they got to eat. So they are literally defenseless creatures. Now, I know what somebody is saying right now. I know what somebody is saying right now, but I, but but not me. I got a gun. I got an alarm at my house. I I, I you know I, I I got an alarm service that I hire. Some was so got it so going on. I got secret service. Y'all just don't even know about me. But guess what? There's an enemy that you cannot see that, that, that the Bible says that's going about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But thank God because of the shepherd Jesus Christ, he protects us from even those things that we cannot see. Somebody ought to give him a praise today. Because there are dangers seen and unseen that you went through on last week that it had not been for the good shepherd. You would not be where you are today the way that you are here today. So thank God that he, he is the protector. Not only is he the protector, but he's also the provider. How do we know that he's the provider? Let's just do it, y'all. It, it, it just To me, it just makes us feel good to do it. We'll do it all together. The Psalm 23 on the count of three. Let's do it. One, two, three. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restore my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You ought to give him a praise because it shows how he is able to provide. So it does not matter what I need. Can I get a witness in here? I think, I think, I think Brianna used to say it this way when she was very young. The Lord is my shepherd and I got all I need. And that's the way to look at him. When you got the shepherd, you got everything that you need. Uh, this, this past week, Marcy and I had the privilege of going to, uh, to Washington, D.C., and uh, we were there for about three days in Washington, D.C. What a wonderful city, what a pla wonderful place to live. And, uh, and, and for the first time in my life, I know some of y'all are more high-tech. Y'all know y'all more high-tech than me. I'm, I'm kind of just getting some stuff into the 21st century. So for the first time in my life, I use Uber. I never used Uber before. Didn't have no doubt. Really had some idea how it went. You know, I met some people and, you know, all of that sort of thing. So we use Uber. And I remember the first time that we actually got on, you know, to get the app for you, Uber in Washington, D.C., uh, Marcy does what she does with technology, get on the thing, and, 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 and the response was, we'll be there in a minute. Uh -huh. yeah. In a minute? What? 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 You're going to be there in a minute? So I'm grabbing my stuff. Y'all know I like to be on time for everything. Marcy kind of, I said, hey, hey, they said they're going to be there in a minute. Let's get on down there. And lo and behold, we walk out the place, told us what kind of car it was going to be, and they were there uh -huh. All right. in a minute. Get ready to go somewhere else. I think we went to the African American Museum of, 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 of cult history and culture. Get ready to get ready to leave there. We decided to walk, you know, walk back to the to, to, to the hotel that night and all that. Get up the next day. We're getting ready to go to hopefully going to see the memorials and all of that sort of thing. And as we know, matter of fact, we went to the Bible Museum on on uh, on Thursday on Wednesday morning. And as we're getting getting ready for that, she does the app, and the guy says it again. We'll be there in a minute. We walk outside, and guess what? The Uber's right in the front in a minute. Uh -huh. Well, Wednesday night, I was actually amazed at Wednesday night because Wednesday night, we walked late, and we were, we were, we were uh, uh, looking at the, at the War Memorial and, and the Washington Monument and all that. We're walking, and man, having a great time, and it's late at night. She goes with the app, and the guy say, I see you already. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> what in the world is going on here? But the reality is the way that you use Uber, no matter where you are, there might be somebody that might be in the territory where you are. Well, come here. Here's what I recognize. We needed a ride to get to where we needed to go. 
and Uber was always available to get us there. Well, if Uber can do what they do, certainly the God of the universe, the one who is our shepherd, can always get us where he needs us to be. I'm telling y'all, I was absolutely amazed. And he said, I see y'all all. I'm like, what? Crosses the street, blinks the light, shows us his Uber, got his name on it and everything. I'm telling you, I was thoroughly impressed. I had to give an extra tip for that one because you right on time like that, only one I can know can come on time like that is the God that I serve. So notice again what he says. He says, first of all, as the good shepherd, I supply for my sheep. Here's the second thing. As the good shepherd, I sacrifice for my sheep. Notice again, the, the B clause, I've read it already, of verse 11. The good shepherd does what? Gives his life for the sheep. So there are two things that, that happens there. First of all, what he's saying, I am totally selfless. And then watch this, I am their substitute. I am totally selfless and I am their substitute. Watch it, look at the verse, look at the verse. The good shepherd gives his life. Meaning that God so what? Loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but would have everlasting life. So he gave his life. Why? Because he's selfless. Notice what I said. He's not selfish. He's selfless. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Now watch this. Let me show you how opposite that is. Because normally, the domesticated sheep were actually made for the purpose of serving others. All right, yeah. all right. Watch this. A sheep, when you think about it, the wool can be used what, for clothing. It can be used for various materials, correct? When you think about, again, the hide, the hide can be used for other things. Again, we would say for leather products, whatever they may be. When you think about the meat itself, the mutton, it can actually be used to be eaten and to feed somebody. So the sheep actually gives his life for the sake of somebody else. But Jesus is saying, I'm the good shepherd who actually lays down his life for the sheep. So he's selfish. And watch this. For the sheep, he is their substitute. Sheep normally died for somebody. But in this case, you got somebody dying for the sheep. Come on, help me, y'all. Only Jesus, only God could be the one. When you look at it, things that normally died for a purpose, he now turns it around and died for the very thing that needed his death. Jesus shows us he is our sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank God for Jesus, y'all. Yeah. Thank God for Jesus. Yeah. When you think about his perfection, when you think about his righteousness, you think about his goodness, he was selfless yeah. enough to die yeah. for folk like you and I. Now, for just a moment, just think about some of the things you've done in your past. Come on back. Don't stay long. It might drive you crazy. You, they're like, oh, Lord, I can't stay that long. That'll, that'll mess me up, Pastor. Don't, I can't stay that too long. I'm going to have to get up, jump and shout around here. When I think about all that the Lord done brought me through, when I, when I think about the places that I've been and the folk that I hung with and the things that I've done, when I think about stuff that I put in my body and things that I've done with my body and to think that I am here right now and I really don't have no whole lot of issues that a whole lot of folk that was in there with me got today, I can't help but say it's nobody but the Lord that was selfless enough to be my substitute. And right now, I'm going to just pause and give him a praise because I recognize it was all because, can I get a witness in here? He was our substitute, y'all. Ooh, Lord. And what I look at is the more bad we were, the more grace he had. The more rebellious we were, the more grace he had. The more cantankerous we were, the more grace he had. Thank God for the selfless shepherd who substituted his life for his sheep. But notice, notice, notice what's happening now. He goes from, he goes from talking about the good shepherd to the no good shepherd. He gives us, he gives us the good shepherd. He says again, the good shepherd, as the good shepherd, I supply for my sheep. As the good shepherd, I sacrifice for my sheep. But then watch this, verses that in verse three, in verse uh, 12, he says, as the no good shepherd, they scatter the sheep. 
The good shepherd supplies. The good shepherd sacrifices. But the no good shepherds do what? They, they scatter. Watch, watch. Look at verse 12. But a hireling. Now watch this. If you remember, earlier on, Jesus talked about, he referred to them two other ways. Look at verse, at verse 10, verse, chapter 10, verse 1. He says, thief and robber. Right? No good shepherd. Thief and a robber. Correct? When you come back up to verse 8, all who ever before me are thieves and robbers. So he says that the no good shepherds are thieves, robbers, and hirelings. So notice what he says in verse, in verse 12. He who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, does what? Sees the wolf coming, leaves the sheep, and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. So now, he's given us a contrast to what a good shepherd does and what a no good shepherd does. Notice what a no good shepherd does. Three things. First of all, it says they, they, lack, they lack loyalty for the sheep. They lack loyalty to the sheep, however you want to put it. They leave the sheep. And the third thing is they lose the sheep. They lack loyalty. Why? The sheep don't belong to them, so they don't really care. The, the, the sheep not there, so they don't really care. So when, when again, the, the, the wolf comes and they see the wolf coming, rather than doing what the good shepherd does, and that is to provide and protect the sheep, yeah. according to them, they lack loyalty. They, they, don't, they don't have no skin in the game. Yeah. Ain't my sheep. Right. Yeah. They ain't mine. My Lord. That's rough. That's tough. I see the wolf coming, and there's nothing I'm going to do to help the sheep. Because I really don't care. You know what I told y'all, brothers and sisters, you got to keep this in mind. Remember the, the week before last, we talked about that verse that we often quote, the, the, the enemy comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And we talk about Satan. That's not Satan. That's no good preachers. That's no good prophets. That's those that don't preach for the right reason. Don't pastor for the right reason. Don't serve for the right reason. That's why I'm telling you, if you are in a church where a pastor cares about you, you ought to thank God for your pastor. Because there are some that are out there do not care. Long as I got mine. And all I want to do is take and take and take and take. And I'm encouraging you to give and give and give because I got some places I need to go quicker than you need to go. I got some places I need to hang out and vacation longer than you can. I need you to give and give and give and, and give and give and give. But pastor, my family, my mama's sick. I don't care. My, my relatives died. I don't care. I don't know. I'm gonna pay my bills. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I really don't care because there's no loyalty to the sheep. Notice the other thing that he says. And what do they do? They leave the sheep. Look again. Notice again. He says, "One who does not own the sheep sees no again no loyalty. See the wolf coming. All right. See the wolf coming." See the wolf coming yeah, yeah, yeah. and leaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Leaves the sheep. That's cold blooded, y'all. That's, that's, that's cold blooded. I, I, am, I am convinced in my mind. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, just, you know we, we, thought, we, we talk about some of those tragic things that have happened, but I'm convinced in my mind. Somebody, somebody, somebody walk in here, the one thing I ain't going to do is try to be the first to run. I'm, I'm convinced of that in my mind. I'm not going to be the first one. I'm not going to be looking to run because I have a responsibility, even as a human pastor, to take care of the folk that God has given me the responsibility to oversee. Now, I will say this. If I tell you to run, run. Did y'all hear what I said? Believe I'm going to have some courage. I don't know how long that courage is going to stay, but I'm a, when I say run, run. If I say duck, duck. Yeah. Say go, go. Don't, don't waste no time. 
it. Can I get a witness in here? But the Bible says a no good shepherd leaves. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a flock of sheep are there together? And because the shepherd's position, he can see more than the sheep. But remember, he's a hireling. He doesn't care about the sheep. He see the wolf coming. And watch now. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. He knows that wherever he goes, the sheep going to follow. Did y'all hear what I said? But the wolf is coming in a distance. And if he in front, some of y'all catching it. And the sheep following him, guess who the wolf going to get to first? The sheep. Because the shepherd is all the way in the front. Pull little sheep in the back. It's all over for you. Why? Because the shepherd does not care. What does he do? He leaves the sheep. And then finally, what the verse says, he loses the sheep. Why? The wolf catches the sheep and does what? And scatters them. And the wolf, again, is not scattering them just for the purpose of seeing them spread. He is scattering them ultimately to destroy them. So Jesus is pointing out here that, that he is the good shepherd versus the no good shepherd. Now, what? keep this in mind. When we read this text, and this is the only way we can do it together, because if we tried to preach every, if we tried to preach it all at the same time, it would take hours for us to be able to do that. So we got to put it in some segments. So here's what I want you to keep in mind. Let's recapture why Jesus was telling these parables or why he was talking about the fact he was the good shepherd in the first place. Let's go back to the fact that Jesus had healed a man that had been blind from birth. Remember now, that man had been interrogated, he had been insulted, and he had been rejected by the Jewish leaders. These were the false teachers. They would literally be called the false prophets. These were the wolves. These were the hirelings. These were the thieves. These were the robbers. They were literally rejected him because you remember when Jesus questioned them. Matter of fact, matter of fact, some of y'all won't remember. Let's go back to the passage. Let's go back to chapter, 10, chapter 9 for just a moment. Go back to chapter 9 with me for just a moment. Look at verse 26. Chapter 9, verse 26. Just so you can remember. Then they said to him again, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen, right? Yeah. Why, do you want, why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Uh -huh. Then they reviled him. Here again, they're insulting him. They interrogated him. Now they're insulting him and said, you are his disciples, but we are Moses' disciples. Uh -huh. We know that God spoke to Moses. As for this fellow, we do not know where he is from. Now watch this. Here's this testimony. The man answered and said to them, why? This is marvelous. This is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from. Yet he has opened my eyes. Yeah. Now we know that God does not hear sinners. This is the man talking. Yeah. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Since the world began, it has been, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was blind. If this man were not from God, he could do what? Nothing. Nothing. They answered him again to him to say to him, you were completely born in your sins. That's why you were born blind. You're a sinner. He says, are you, are you teaching us? And watch this. And they cast him out. They rejected him. But what did Jesus do? Look at the next verse. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he found him, he said to him, do you believe in the son of God? He shared the gospel with him now, y'all. Yeah, yeah. He answered and said, who is he, Lord, that I may believe? Yeah. Jesus said to him, you have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Yeah. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And what did he do? He worshiped Jesus Christ. Yeah. On the one hand, you got the religious leaders who cast the man out, but you got the Lord who brings the man in. And what does the man do? He worship him because he recognized who yeah. Jesus was. All he said, the fact that I am the good shepherd of your life, you ought to give me the worship yeah. that I deserve. Yeah. The fact that I am the one that wake you up every morning, you ought to give me the praise that I deserve. The fact that I'm the one that allows you to go on a job and work all day long and protect you. 
from hurt, harm, and danger. You ought to live like you love me. Can I get a witness in here? The fact that you got sickness in your body, but I keep you going still every day. I know you're hurting. I know it's painful, but I keep you going every day. You ought to worship me with everything that is in you. He worshiped him. Finally, here's the other thing. As the no good shepherd, he talks about the fact that they scattered the sheep. But here's the final thing. He, he also says, I have solidarity with my sheep. I have solidarity with my sheep. I have solidarity with my sheep. What is solidarity? It is the condition of being strongly united as in an action or a feeling. Solidarity is solid. It's together. There's nothing that can tear it apart. I have solidarity, Jesus says, with my sheep. Verse 14 and 15, and we'll be done for today. Look what he says in verse 14. He says, I am the good shepherd. He repeats it again. Watch this. I know my sheep, and I'm known by my own two things that go, three things that go with that. First of all, he says it is a perceptive relationship. In other words, you know how many of us say, you know, I perceive. I, I perceive. In other words, there's a sense that something is right, not right or something is right. There is, a, there is a perceptive relationship. Jesus says, I know them and I'm also known by them. You know, let, 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 let me put it this way. I, I still say it. I'm fascinated by it, how a mother can be in a setting where there are a whole, a whole lot of other children, and if her baby cry, she'll know it's hers. Have y'all ever noticed that? If the baby cry, and mom says, that's my baby. Be thinking about how you, how you, with all of these children and all these, all these, folk, all these folk in here crying, and you're saying, that's your baby? Because she has this perception, yeah. All right. this close-knit perception yeah. of her own no, no. child. Right. So what God is saying, I know my sheep. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's why it is actually said in, 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 in the Bedouin tribes, in terms of those that take care of sheep, they could literally go out in a, 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 a sheepfold where there are other sheep and call out all of their sheep by name. Come on. I tell you. And what he says, they also know me. Here's the other side. How many, how many of y'all remember how y'all, I don't know, I don't know what y'all, what you all's uh, protocol was coming up. But when we used to play outside, uh, some of y'all had the message before the street lights went out, you had to be back. I don't know what it was. Everybody had some kind of little, but sometimes if you went over, yeah, we, we live at a, a, a 6018 Los Angeles. And sometimes we were playing in, in the new loyalty yard, and uh, we would go over. Yeah. And, and you hear a voice say, Levin! <laughs> and I'm, I'm serious, y'all. If, if, if the voice would have just said, Lee, I come running happy like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But when she said, Levin, uh -oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> Fellas, I gotta go. Give me my ball. <laughs> I was the one that had the football. The game is over, man. I'm gone. I'm gone. Hey, man, let's hold the ball. No, no, man. Give me my ball. Because I done went over. My mama is now calling me. We ain't heard nothing. Hey, y'all ain't had to hear nothing. My mama is calling me because I know her voice. Come on, y'all. Don't you know the voice of Jesus? Can't you hear the voice of Jesus? Come on, let's just, let's just be honest. Sometimes it's not audible, but you know when the Lord is speaking to you to let you know everything is going to be. Come on, can I get a witness in here? If you haven't experienced that yet, just ask the Lord. Lord, just give me that kind of peace. Give me that, that kind of comfort that, that I know in the midst of all the chaos, in the midst of all the noise, i got a still voice in me that's telling me everything is going to be all right. Woo! Woo! We, we, on, we on that play, we on that play Friday night. 
and, and before we take off, the man say, we just came back from San Antonio, and we had a lot of turbulence coming back from San Antonio, so we just about know this trip going to be some turbulence. And I'm saying, sure, they telling us before we leave, it's going to be some turbulence. That's what I'm saying. I'm thinking in my mind, oh, Lord, you know. And I got, and I got this, this, this horrific uh, a thing in my mind. One time we were leaving to go to Miami, leaving out of Houston to go to Miami, and the, and the weather was terribly bad. And we would just take it off, just take it off, man. And, and I don't know if it was lightning or thunder, but it was one of them hard ones. Uh-huh. It was, it was, I mean, it was a jolt and wow. a jerk. I mean, that thing, bam, and it went back up. And everybody, ah, and I still remember that sometimes. So when they say terrible, I'm holding on, I'm thinking, okay, it's going to be one of them. <laughs> but you know what? Still a small voice. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, well, you're you going you you to get back to Houston, man. I mean. It's going to be some turbulence. It's going yeah, 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 yeah. It might be a little rough ride, but you're going you're gonna to get back yeah. to Houston. I, I, I put myself to the side. I was by the window. I put my head against that thing, and I went to sleep, man. Yeah. Wasn't worried about it. They hit some turbulence. We did a little couple of little, but I said, hey, Lord, you said we're going to get there, so I'm all right. Can I get a witness in here that he's just got a way of letting you know everything? It's going to be all right. Money, funny, change, strange, ruptures in relationship, but it's going to be all right. Yes, sir. It's a personal relationship, personal relationship. He says, as the Father knows me, even so I know them. That's personal, y'all. Yeah. Just as the Father knows me, he says, that's how I know my sheep. He knows you so well, brothers and sisters, that he knows the number of hairs on your head. Yeah. He knows you so well that he knows the number of breaths that you take every single day. He knows you so well that he knows your heartbeat. He knows you so well that when you talk to him in the midst of maybe two a billion other folk talking to him at the same time, he still hears your voice. He knows you that well. And here's the final thing. It's a priceless relationship. He says, I laid down my life. I laid down my life. I laid down my life for the sheep. Do, do this for me just, just, just as a closing today. Everybody, if you will, get, out, get your program out. And if y'all want to on the screen, uh, um, um, Patrice, if you just want to put the, uh, the Good Shepherd logo on the screen, I want y'all to see something. Our logo actually comes out the top head, top left hand corner of your of your. That's a, that's our logo, right. the Good Shepherd, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you notice the verse that's under it is John chapter ten, yeah. verse eleven. Yeah. But I want you to see something. Notice notice what you see. First of all, you see a lamb that's looking up. Amen. All right, all right. But when the lamb looks up, if you notice the 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 vertical uh, piece has a hook at the end, which gives the idea of a shepherd's staff. But if you notice, the shepherd's staff has also a vertical piece that it gives the look of a cross. So you have we who are his sheep are now standing before the good shepherd who gave his life for the sheep. Let me say that one more time. We who are his sheep look up to the shepherd with his staff who gave his life for the sheep. Stefan says sometimes that the, the, you know, maybe the third time is the charm. We who are his sheep look up to the shepherd who has his staff that is connected to the cross that every last one of us need. So what it says to us is that that relationship shepherd and sheep is a priceless relationship. Have you ever thought about what it cost God to put you and I back together again? Can I, can I get you to turn to somebody and tell them, I didn't come cheap. Come on, say it to the next person on the other side. I didn't come cheap. Let me tell you why you didn't come cheap. God, first of all, gave his son. Somebody is missing. You missing your shouting cue. God gave his I better say it one more time God the father gave his and the son gave his 
for sinners like you and I. I'm telling you, we did not come. You know what I'm noticing? I'm noticing. I'm noticing. I'm noticing. We live in a day and age that everybody put the value on stuff based upon how much it costs. I've talked to some young folk that got holy jeans. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Holy jeans, I mean, yeah, they, yeah. they cut here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's all, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's all over. And you say, you say, wow, man. You know, when I'm just with my little nieces, you know, I, I've got a bad understanding. I'm old. I was like, you, you bought those? <laughs> for real, for real, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, you know, because I believe back in the day, y'all know what I'm talking about. If we, if we, if we just, if we didn't know that was the style back in the day, shoot, well, nobody gonna get our money. We were gonna go down to, to wherever Goodwill, get us some jeans, put some holes in them bad boys, and style that thing like it just came out of New York City. Can I get a witness in here? And I hear the folks say, they say, oh yeah, it cost me fifty dollars. I say for them holy jeans. Seriously? Somebody, you talk about somebody clothes and they say, oh, yeah, yeah, you, call, you know, it cost uh, me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Somebody, you may say, man, that's a nice watch, man. Oh, it cost me. Uh -huh. And they value it based upon what it costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's what I'm telling you. If you never get another watch, if you never get another car, if you never get another pair of shoes, if you never wear any fancy clothes, you already been bought with the highest price that could ever be paid. Jesus died in order that you might be free. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and I give my life for the sheep. Father, how we love you and we thank you for Jesus.